In this video, we are presenting a 36-year-old woman applied with extreme cyanosis and short of breath with a misdiagnosis of a large VSD and pulmonary hypertension over the years. Having heard a loud and high-pitched pulmonary stenosis murmur on auscultation as a warning sign, we, the patient was referred to a pediatric cardiologist. This time, the echocardiography revealed a double outlet right ventricle with extremely tight pulmonary stenosis and a large coronal VSD, which is commonly seen in such cases. We decided to close the VSD with intracardiac tunnel patch and to supply pulmonary flow with a valve conduit as a Rastelli procedure. Due to the unavailability of a suitable sized valve conduit during the uh, pandemic, we decided to tailor a custom-made valve conduit mounting a size 25 biologic valve in a 28mm Jotec coated Dacron graft. The valve conduit prepared at the back table before cross clamping, estimating the sizes according to the preoperative weight, length, and angiographic measurements of the patient. Having invaginated the, the Dacron graft, the valve continues the suture after putting three separated four or proline suture. Then, invaginated uh, graft was reversed as seen at the video. Flow direction was carefully marked on the conduit to avoid any misapplication. Cardiopulmonary bypass was applied in routine manner with median stenotomy, bicable, and aortic cannulation. After careful dissection and mobilization of the pulmonary artery and its two branches, cross clamp was applied with cold crystalloid cardioplegia. A vertical small ventriculotomy was performed to the anterior wall of the right ventricle, avoiding the neighboring coronary arteries. Border of the large VST and tricuspid valve, as well as aortic orifice, was carefully observed. In order to manage this, even digital examination with right index finger was applied by passing through the large VST to reach the aorta freely to confirm the suturing line of the intracardiac tunnel patch. You can see easily the position of large subconal VST and tricuspid valve at this zoom in. We started with single pledged 4O proline suture at the anterior ventricle site of the coronal septum and intersected part of the septal leaflet. At this very mo moment, we tailored a large decrum patch to close the large VSD as an intracardiac tunnel, also known as buffle. Please note that we carefully rehearsed the patch to be sure it is large enough not to cause any subaortic stenosis. Having passing through the single place that used sutures from the decrum graft and tied off we start to suture the rest of the graft continuously towards anterior border of the border of the aorta. At this part of suturing, we try to have bites to give left ventricular outflow enough space as well as to avoid the coronary artery which is very close to ventriculotomy.
Then we retailor the length of the dacron patch in accordance with the remaining suture line, still keeping the patch large enough to create bulging of the intracardiac buffer at the left ventricular outflow tract. You can see suturing of the anterior portion of VST passing through the sutures out of the right ventricle. And the closing of the VST now is completed. And additional sutures were applied to the bleeding points at the VSD patch, checking by giving extra small portion of cardioplegia. Then pulmonary artery was carefully opened and extremely stenotic pulmonary valve is observed. And this pulmonary orifice was closed by double layer continuous suturing technique with 4 or proline. Anastomosis between pulmonary orifice and the distal end of valve conduit was carried out starting with a pledged U suture and then completed by running suture technique. <coughs> Preparing for proximal anastomosis, valve conduit was tailored according to the size of right ventriculotomy. Then it was anastomosed to right ventricle, starting with placed with U suture again at the heel of the conduit. By using both arms of this pledged stitch, valve conduit was sutured continuously to the anterior ventriotomy. This part, since the coronary artery was very close to the suture line, we take each suture bite very carefully to avoid any damage to the coronary artery.
Having completing the anastomosis, cross clamp was removed and the airing was performed at the apex of left ventricle and by other means. Needle hole was sutured carefully to control the bleeding. The heart has started to beat spontaneously and the patient had a very good hemodynamic performance as it is seen at the monitor.